in this English lesson, I wanted to help you learn the English phrase grasping at straws. When you are grasping at straws, you want something to be true or you want something to be right, but you know you have very little chance of proving it or getting it. Um, here's a great example. Let's say you answered a question on a math test and the answer was eight and you wrote six instead of eight. If you went to the teacher and said, Sir, I wrote six instead of eight, but if you look at the six, it sort of looks like an eight. Or if the student said, you know, sir, I wrote six, but I meant to write eight. Now that I know the answer was eight, I really meant to write eight. We would say that that student is grasping at straws. They're trying to find ways to prove something was right and they have very little evidence and it just isn't true. So when you are grasping at straws, you are trying to make something seem like it was correct when it wasn't. The second phrase I want to teach you today is the phrase, the last straw. The last straw, I guess the best way to look at this is if you have an argument or fight with someone, you usually have it right after the last straw. Something was the last straw. Maybe you have a friend who constantly says things about you that bother you a little bit. And they say things all the time and you never really mention it. They kind of, maybe like yesterday I said, they make fun of your hair or they say unkind things about you. And then one day you just, it's the last straw. They do that one last thing that really upsets you and you just yell at them or have an argument with them. We would say that that is the last straw. So to review, when you are grasping at straws, you are trying to desperately prove that something is true when probably even in your own heart, you know it's not true. Um, so you're using any argument you can to try and prove it's true. Uh, and when something is the last straw, it's like that last thing that happens before you get angry or before you have an argument, um, it's the last straw. Hey, let's look at a comment from a previous video. This comment is from Vladimir. And Vladimir says this, Hi Bob, how are you doing? I would be grateful if you could explain the difference between the words bald and bold. How do you pronounce them? These words have similar pronunciation, but various meanings. Thanks for answering and have a great weekend. And I said, I will do this at the end of my next video. So this was from yesterday's video. I thought this was a great one to talk about. So first of all, bald. Um, bald. I'm not bald. You can see right here though, I'm not sure what's happening here. I think this is just gray hair, but it could be the beginning uh, of my hair falling out. Maybe in a few years when you're watching Bob the Canadian, I might be bald. Um, I don't think that's happening yet, but a bald person uh, is a man that has no hair. Uh, generally, women don't lose their hair. Actually, I don't know much about men and women who go bald. So let's just stick with the fact that I can tell you this, my grandfather on my dad's side of the family was bald. My grandfather on my mom's side of the family had a full head of hair uh, right up till the day he died. So I hope that I have an in inherited the genes from my mom's side of the family. Uh, so far, so good. Um, but yeah, I do, if you look, whenever I get a haircut, um, I'm not sure what this is. There's a little white line. I think maybe it's just gray hair. Anyways, that's bald, B-A-L-D, bald. Bold is when you have a lot of courage, so B-O-L-D. If someone is a bold person, they are not afraid to do things, they are not afraid to say things, they are very bold. Um, I hope someday that I can say that I am a bold person. Sometimes I'm afraid to say things, but mostly I just say whatever's on my mind. Anyways, there's the difference, bald and bold.